So today's question is, should you take nutritional advice from fitness experts or social media influencers, somebody like me, for instance? Uh, now, there's no shortage of people's opinions out there and what they did in order to get themselves fit and trim or thinned up or, you know, what, what product they're recommending. Uh, it's a matter of who do you trust. And there was a recent article by Mercy Livingston from wellandgood.com, and she titled it, Four red flags to watch out for from any fitness expert, expert or influencer offering nutritional advice. And her first one is, um, even though that they may be, you know, completely fit and trim, and they uh, know a lot about fitness, uh, they don't necessarily have the credentials for the nutrition side. You know, certified nutritionists go to school for a long time. They learn a lot about the body, how everything works, what foods work, what's what doesn't. Um, you know, I, I guess I agree with that. One thing I would say back is, you know, there's a lot of confusion sometimes with the experts. Um, you know, some experts recommend keto and some don't, you know, some recommend this and others don't. Um, there's also, I guess, things that happen have happened through the years where, you know, like they say, like, fat is good, fat is not good. Oh, some fat is good, some fat is not good. You know, so I think that's where people get confused a little bit. Uh, number two on our list is affiliating and promoting specific brands. Um, I can agree with this one too. You know, sometimes a, a fitness expert recommends a certain, you know, product just because they're getting paid for it, obviously. Um, and it's a matter of it can be a conflict of interest for them because they're getting paid to promote it. Number three, lack of sourcing to back up their claims. Um, so if, uh, fitness expert claims, you know, puts out a certain claim out there, but doesn't cite any study or, um, you know, proof of it, then it's kind of questionable as to, you know, if they can really back up their claim. One thing I would say back to that is, you know, it can be a matter of actually who's funding the study because a certain group funds a study and somehow the results turn out this way and another group funds a study and it turns out this way. I think it's kind of been, uh, like that with eggs, you know, eggs are good, eggs are bad, you know, it just flip flops back and forth, depending on whose study you go by. And I think there's been a few other things out there like uh, cholesterol and olive oil. So, you know, it's some of those things that kind of make it confusing for people. Number four, extreme statements and lofty promises. And it's the whole idea that uh, they say, hey, I did this exercise and I dropped 60 pounds or, uh, hey, I took this supplement and I lost 90 pounds, you know, that kind of thing. So I guess, you know, it's whenever you see something on the internet, always approach it, you know, being kind of skeptical. Just like I teach my kids, you know, don't believe everything you see or hear on the internet or anywhere, basically. <clears throat> you got to always question it. I guess my thing is if I see something that uh, somebody brings up um, that I think is interesting, well, I'll go research it and I'll say, oh, that's interesting. And I'll just, you know, poke around and uh, see if I can find any, any, you know, something to back up what the, what that influencer said. Um, I guess I would add a number five to this list um, for Mercy Livingston. I would say that uh, every, everybody's body is different. So if a particular fitness expert is recommending this or that, you know, it might have worked for them, but uh, it doesn't work for everybody because everybody's different. Um, that's what I think. Let me know what you think. Uh, let me know in the comments, and uh, I hope you have a great rest of your day.